Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Facebook Marketing Challenge. Um, thank you guys for hanging out and thank you for spending some time together. Um, we're hoping to work together here as a family, as a community, and do anything that we can together to uh, weather this storm and get through um, this you know, very challenging time for us as photographers. And so if you're just joining us on the marketing challenge that we're running right now, welcome and thank you for joining. If you joined us yesterday for day one, that's great. If you haven't watched day one, I definitely encourage you to go back and watch that uh, video. We have a link for it up on our YouTube channel. It's also here in our Facebook group. And we also sent a checklist and a summary and a written version of it via email if you've signed up for the program already. So if you do want to sign up for the program, all of this stuff is completely free. We're just doing whatever we can to help you, uh, again, weather this storm. If you go to getsproutstudio.com slash first aid, then you'll be able to put in your email address there, and uh, we will email you every day a reminder of this live. We're going to go live in the Facebook group here at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the morning, um, and then we're going to email out a you know basically a transcript so that you can have a, a written version of it as well, um, as well as a checklist and all kinds of other pretty things um, to uh, to get this going. So hey, LJ, <laughs> what's happening? Um, so yesterday we talked about your website, right? And we're talking about website and digital presence first in this 14-day marketing challenge because no matter what you do as a photographer to market yourself at some point, your clients will find themselves on your website. And so we have a whole bunch of things planned in this roadmap, um, you know, in, in the coming days um, that are going to be, you know, very quick wins in terms of ways to generate revenue, launching courses, doing gift certificates, doing family portrait promos, recurring revenue models for other businesses, things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, again, every one of those people that you reach out to and get your name in front of um, will find themselves on your website. And they'll find themselves on your Instagram or on your Facebook page or whatever social media channels you choose to use in your business. And so that's why we believe it's very important to focus on making sure that your website is as well oiled a machine as it possibly can. I uh, definitely don't want you to go and build a brand new website through this 14 day challenge. That's not what this is about. This is about um, doing what you can each day to make a small improvement in some way. So yesterday on the website portion, we talked about your tone and your language and how you can approach things um, from a storytelling approach and from a guided experience approach. So again, if you haven't watched that, go back and watch that and we have a whole challenge associated with that. And today, we're talking more specifically about your portfolio and the images that you have on your website. Now, again, this is a Facebook Live, and so if you are joining us live, one of the benefits that you have by being here live is that we can go back and forth and we can you know, um, uh, collaborate on ideas and brainstorm and, uh, and argue and go back and forth and whatever we want here. So if you have thoughts that you wanna throw at me, if you have suggestions that you wanna throw into the rest of the community, Please don't hesitate to do that. We welcome that. I don't want this just to be something that I'm just, you know, throwing at you. I, I really want this to be a dialogue so that everybody can help each other. Um, and really, at the end of the day, there's more than one way to run your business, obviously. So I'm going to give you suggestions based on best practices and based on what I've learned running a photography business for 15 years and having spoken and taught to thousands and thousands of photographers, but certainly that is not the only way. And so I really want you to feel encouraged to be able to also throw um, you know, your two cents in here. And I'd love to hear your feedback and some of the things that you've learned as it relates to the lessons that we're going through here. So um, again, I've got my little cheat sheet here. Uh, we're all, we're flying by this ad hoc. This is very, you know, fly by the seat of our pants. And again, just doing everything that we can to try and help you. Um, so at the end of the day, what I want um, to encourage you to think about when it comes to your website, put yourself in your customer's shoes. Put yourself in that website visitor's shoes. What are they coming to your website to do? What are they hoping to accomplish or hoping to achieve by going to your website? And I would argue that it kind of all boils down to they're looking to get to know you and your style a little bit. They want to understand who you are and how you approach what it is that you offer, whether that be wedding photography or family portraits or boudoir or whatever the case is. They want to understand that a little bit more. They want to see how you can help them. That's really important and like underline that a little bit because if you can show them how you can help them, then you've won the game. 
You know, so many photographers, and we talked about this yesterday, so many photographers build their web presence as if they're the hero in the story, as if, you know, they're the one that is, you know, the sort of be all and end all. And that's really not the right way to approach your website because when a client goes to your site, all they care about is them. All they care about is understanding how you can help them. So if you can frame your website and your language and your portfolio and how you present your portfolio in a way that leans into that, then you're going to find yourself having a higher conversion rate. You're going to find yourself connecting better with customers on your website. You're going to find that more of those people are going to dig in dive in and then eventually get in touch with you, which is ultimately the goal of your website. So just keep that in mind as you curate and build your portfolio and present your portfolio that you want to show them how you can help them. That is like the most important thing. At the end of the day, if that's the only thing you take away from this, I hope you take away more. Um, keep that in mind that you want to show how you can help them. Um, so I've got 10 tips on curating your portfolio and on presenting your portfolio. Um, if you have tips that you want to throw in with this, to again, to help the community, please feel free to like throw them in the comments as I'm talking here. And, um, you know, let's, let's all share ideas as to how we can make our portfolio on our website, the most, you know, the most effective thing that it possibly can be. At the end of the day, another uh, sort of note that I just want to add before I get into these 10 tips is that your website in and of itself is not a portfolio. And we talked about that yesterday, but it's important to note again that your website is a sales tool. Your website is supposed to help you connect with your clients and build relationships with your clients. It's not in and of itself a portfolio. Now your website has a portfolio, but it isn't the only thing that you need to be focusing on. Um, cohesive editing, LJ, 100%. In fact, that's one of my tips on here. So yes. And if LJ, if you want to add to that, when I get to that point, I'd love to hear some more, uh, some more thoughts from you on that as well, for sure. Okay. So, so 10 tips. Um, tip number one, Include images throughout your site and not just on a portfolio page. Yes, we want to have, you know, like a gallery page or a featured weddings page or a featured sessions page or whatever it is, but um, include images throughout every page of your website. Include them on your homepage. Include them on the content sections of your website so that your client is never really, or your visitor, a website visitor, is never really going to any part of your website where there isn't some of your work showing. So include images on every page of your site. In fact, a good test for you is to go to your website and try this on a couple different devices. Try it on a laptop, try it on an iPad, try it on your phone. And there really should never be any time that you're on your website on any one of your pages where an image isn't within view. Does that make sense? So if you're reading a page or if you're reading the home page or if you're on the contact page or whatever it is there should never be a page where one of your images is not in view so that's a sort of a good challenge a good little homework uh, assignment there to kind of think of um number two when it comes to the actual portfolio part you know the gallery part where you're going to show a, a wider breadth of your work um Try to show the images one image at a time. So, you know, more gallery style than necessarily blog post style. And I think that that's useful because we need to break people out of the pattern that we're used to on something like an Instagram or on a Facebook where we're scrolling and we're scrolling and we're scrolling. Because if we fall into that pattern, then you're sort of blending into that paradigm and that pattern, that, that, that psychological pattern that people have by just scrolling and not necessarily paying attention to what they're looking at. So if you can present one image at a time, not only does your image get to stand by itself the way that you intend it to, to be seen, but we break people out of the pattern by not having them scroll through more images. Does that make sense? So try to have your images presented one image at a time. Um, number three, don't overwhelm your website visitors with too many images. And I see this a lot where some, some websites will have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images in their portfolio. And yes, it's great. You want to show variety and yes, it's great. You want to show depth and breadth, but you also don't want to overwhelm people because if you show too much, you might fall into the trap of, um, paralysis by analysis, right? Where you give just 
too many options and too many things. And eventually the decision that your website visitors will make is that they're going to view nothing as opposed to viewing something. So try to limit the number of images that you show. You also want to reserve something to show them once you do connect with them. If you do a Skype call or if you do a FaceTime call or a phone meeting or if you have them to your studio or if you meet them for coffee, you want to have some work, some of your portfolio that you can still show them that they haven't seen yet from your website. So don't put everything on your website. Um, and another good rule of thumb when it comes to presenting your um, images in your portfolio on your website is your um, your visitors are going to go through a gallery or they're going to go through a collage of images or your galleries, your index page, um, the same way that they would go through an email. And it's funny because we just had this conversation this morning on the Sprout team as we were kind of getting some emails ready to send out to you guys. And basically your clients will more likely read and see whatever's in the top 15% if you know if you're looking at at a page of all your images or a page of all your galleries or even a page of all your content um, your clients will read and see the top 15% of it and then they'll likely scroll through a bunch that's that pattern that we get when we scroll and then they're going to see and read the bottom 15%. So make sure that you've got some strong work at the top and at the very bottom not to say that the work in the middle is not going to be strong but understand that the work at the top is going to get most of their attention the work at the bottom will get the next level or amount of work of their attention and then from you know in the middle um, is going to be uh, is going to be stuff that they're probably going to scroll through but hopefully if they're digging in those that are committed are going to scroll through that stuff so lj you just added a comment adding to blog style way of showing portfolio it's great to paid uh this with actual stories from your clients yes 100 percent blogs Blogs are so important. Stories are so important. And I've actually got a specific idea on that. I want to share that in a minute. And LJ, uh, I know that you do a lot of blogging and um, building content around the work that you do uh, and making what you do about more than just photography. And I have a tip on that. And I want you to weigh in if, if you if you have sort of some two cents to throw into that. Although we're Canadian, so two cents rounds down to zero. Throw in your five cents, okay? Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, pair. Okay, she said pair. Um, number f so that was tip number three. Um, tip number four: um, have cohesion in your portfolio. So again, LJ, this is kind of what you were talking about earlier. Um, don't just necessarily show a mishmash of all of your work. You know, if you're a wedding photographer, for example, don't just be like, "Here's a hundred of like my best images," and it's like a bunch of different weddings and the best work. It's like a highlight reel. Um, yes, that is important if you can supplement. You know, here's a full wedding type of thing. Here's a full story. Um, but I don't believe it's effective to just show, you know, the highlight reel, the best of from a whole bunch of things. Uh, and this would be the case if you were a boudoir photographer, if you were a family portrait photographer, if you were a newborn photographer. Um, tell a story through these galleries. Have cohesion. You know, have have a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Help people connect with the people that are in these images and help them see what you can do as a storyteller, not just the best of the best. Does that make sense? That's something I've always been a proponent of. Even when I talk with brides and grooms, I say, you know, you can put a camera on top of a monkey and have it take a picture every 10 seconds and they're going to get some decent pictures on a wedding day. And if you have them do that for 20 weddings, they're going to be able to put together a portfolio that looks like they know what they're doing. But if you look at the full story of one wedding, that may not be the case. And so I think that's the real differentiator between a photographer who is you know, a master of what they do versus someone that just gets lucky and gets the odd good shot here and there. And I know that you guys are obviously the former, you, you know what you're doing. And so let's have some cohesion to your images. Um, tip number five, what is important for you and for your brand? Um, think of that. And this, this now has to do with the things that we talked about yesterday in the first day of the challenge. Um, Make sure that you show that in your images. And it sounds so obvious, but it sometimes is difficult to think of and difficult to actually put into practice. If for you, um, as a wedding photographer, for example, if it's important for you to be showing, you know, if you're if you're a documentary photographer and that's what you believe in, and that, you know, telling this natural story where there's no evidence of the photographer is important to you don't show family portraits then, <laughs> you know, like you have to show the kind of work that backs up the value proposition that you're trying to show to your clients. 
Um, if you're a newborn photographer who believes in this really beautiful, natural, unstaged style of imagery, more of a lifestyle kind of documentary work, you know, don't show a baby on a dump truck in this beautifully posed studio setting with nice studio lighting. Like that doesn't back up what you're saying you believe in. So whatever it is that your brand stands for, whatever it is that you can do to help your clients, show that in your work. Make sure that they see it because what they see on your website is what they're going to come to expect from you as a photographer. And if you're showing things that you don't want to be doing or if you're showing things in your portfolio that don't back up what it is that you do, then you're going to create this really uh, big misalignment between what you do and what your client expects. So make sure that you back up your value proposition, back up your differentiator, back up what you believe in as a photographer with the work that you're showing in your portfolio. Okay, um, tip number six. Number six. How you guys doing? Quick check-in. You guys doing good? You're doing all right? Give me a thumbs up or give me give me a, a comment or something. I know that I'm about 30 seconds delayed, so I'm not going to sit here for 30 seconds and wait for you, but just give me a comment. Let me know that you're there and let me know that you're paying attention, that everything is uh, okay. If you have questions, please feel free to throw them my way. Again, if you have comments that you want to throw in, if you want to battle me on something, I would love to have a debate. No problem at all. Again, there's more than one way to run a business, but these are just some best practice tips that I hope to uh, impart with you so that you can improve your portfolio. Um, so we're on at tip number six now, yes? So, um, and oh, this this is a tricky one. This one's really, really hard. So when you are curating your um, portfolio, when you're picking the images that are gonna go into your portfolio, are gonna go onto your website and, and show, show off you know your work to your clients, try and remove the story that you have associated with those images. You know, sometimes we fall in love emotionally with some of our work because we know the story behind it. We know what was happening in the moment when that image was made, or we know, you know, what this image means to that client, or or we have this this deeper meaning, this deeper connection, or we know how we lit it and we know how hard it was, and therefore we feel like it was that much better, right? Like things like that. And the challenge with that is that our clients don't know that story. And I'm sorry, not clients. Our website visitors don't know that story. So we might show an image that we love for whatever reason because of the story. But if that story isn't evident or isn't communicated when you show that image, then you lose half of the impact of that image. So try to remove the background of the work that you've created as you're curating your portfolio. Now that comes with a big caveat. Big, big caveat. If you can communicate that story, if you can um, show the behind the scenes or if you can talk about what makes that image for you so much better than just looking at the surface level of the image, then do that. Like tell that story and then show the image. Some of the most effective portfolios that I've seen and the most effective websites that I've seen will tell a story and then um, show the image that you just told that story of. Really quickly, so Brian is asking a question. Uh, Forgive me if this was already addressed. Should I be placing personal interest photos into the portfolio that weren't for clients? So Brian, I think it's not a bad idea to have a personal section, you know, a personal gallery if you wanted to show off some work that that you know you've created for yourself as a creative, as an artist, as a photographer that may not be what your clients will be paying you to do, but I wouldn't I wouldn't incorporate that necessarily into your main portfolio section because again, um, what we want to think about is that our clients are there and they're trying to understand how can you help them? What you know, what are they going to get out of this relationship with you? And if you're showing you know, nice pictures of mountains, but they're looking for a newborn photographer, they may think it's neat. And maybe you want to have that somewhere in, you know, some artist statement or in some section that talks about your inspiration for why you photograph and the things that you do on a personal level. That would be great, but I wouldn't have it in like your portfolio because your portfolio should be tailored towards what that client is there looking to do with you. Does that make sense? So that would be my recommendation there. Now, here's something that I, that I want to try for a minute, okay? Um, I have an image right here, and I want to tell you a story about the image 
and then I'm gonna show you the image. So um, I've got the story, do I have it written out? I don't have it written out. I'll have to go off of memory then. <laughs> so I have been a, um, a professional photographer myself for almost 15 years now. Um, and the entire time that I have been um, a photographer, it has been my family's only source of income. Uh, my wife has been a stay-at-home mom uh, with our three kids now for, well, I guess, seven years. Our daughter just turned seven. Um, and so, you know, everything that we've done as a career and as a family and the lifestyle that we've had has been from the money I've made with my camera. And that's why I'm so gung-ho about helping you guys and teaching you how to make a great living from photography. Now, we bought our first house in 2009, my wife and I. This is before we had kids. Um, and, you know, we gutted the house, like completely renovated it top to bottom. Uh, and then we built a $120,000 studio addition with a full basement attached to the house. Um, and then we built a garage on our house. And then we redid our driveway and added to the driveway. And then we added a 1,200 square foot deck with a tiki bar on the back of our house. We dumped a lot of money into this house, right? And so, again, like this whole while, I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm a professional photographer. That's what I do. Um, and so in July of 2018, we paid off our mortgage. We made the last payment for our mortgage, and we had no mortgage. We had $0 owing on our bill. Um, and we got, in, in, in that month, we got the, the statement uh, from our bank, you know, in, in the mail that, ba you know, you get every month that says, here's the, the details of your mortgage. Um and it said zero dollars, so it's like that was like the official like woohoo, we got it. <laughs> we had no mortgage left, and um, I, you know, at the time we have three kids. At the time we had three kids, um, so we thought that we would do something fun with it, and we thought that we would um, make a paper mache uh, pinata, <laughs> right? So that we we wrapped it around a balloon, and then we popped the balloon with a with a pin, and then um, I think you think we stuffed it. We did. We stuffed it. <laughs> we stuffed it with candy, and. Um, we hung it on the tree in our backyard and our kids helped us make this pinata. It was like this family thing. It was like this symbolic, like no mortgage, rah, rah, here we go. Let's make a pinata with all of our, and we actually, for the pinata, we used all of our mortgage statements because we keep them, all of our mortgage statements that we had gotten over the years, um, obviously showing a declining balance. And the last one was the last piece of the pinata. And so we made this pinata and we we hung it up on the tree outside and then we gave the kids a baseball bat and, and they got to smash it. Um, and it was like this really cool, really amazing symbolic thing for us as a family. You know, photography has done this for us. That's the only income we have is what I've done with photography. And it was this, like this just amazing, beautiful thing that, you know, photography and my camera um, is what has given us the life that we have. Um, and that, again, that's why, that's why I want to teach you and help you in any way that we possibly can. That's why I started Sprout Studio. Um, but so this picture right here is a picture of Ben, our son. Uh, he was, I guess he would have been three or two, two and a half, three at the time. Um, and he had just, he had just hit the pinata and you know how kids like it starts to break open and, you know, he threw the bat in the ground and this was, um, the look on his face and the moment that I captured, um, of him, as the pinata started to break open. And so I want to show the picture now. This this is the picture that I'm talking about. Like, look at the look on his face there. I just love it. Just, he's so full of joy. He's so full of excitement and happiness and just a happy kid. And again, for them, it was like this fun little thing. Um, for us, obviously, you know, being, being a married couple, being adults in the world, um, it was a really exciting and a really big moment for us. And we have this picture, um, as, as well as many, many others, um, in our living room right now. And I just, I love this moment. Now, the reason that I tell that story is I'm trying to illustrate um, point number six that I just went over, which was this image by itself, You, it's a cute picture of, of our son, Ben, absolutely. But when you have a story attached to it, you might look at the image a little bit differently and you might connect with it a little bit differently and it gives you more meaning and more context into the image and I think that exercise that I just went through now again I probably could have made that story way more emotional I probably could have you know structured it better with a middle and a beginning and an end it's a, a whole you know up and a down and a challenge and a this but I, I didn't I just I literally quickly thought of that story two minutes before I went live and I said I gotta I want to show this and tell this to illustrate what I'm talking about but if you can do that, 
on your website, if that's something that you can spend some time today doing, where if there are certain images that you know are really meaningful that you have from your clients, if there's images that have great meaning to your clients, if you can do that exercise and tell a story like that and then show the image. Now, I don't mean that you have to go on video to do this. This could just be like what LJ was suggesting, a, a blog post, or it could be um, in a gallery, you have an image that is just text, and then when they click next, it's the image. So for those that are leaning into this presentation style, they can read the story, click next, see the image. Click next, read a story, click next, see the image. And it's just gonna give your work more depth, more meaning, more um, more of an impact to your to your website visitors because they're connecting with the work that you do the way that you had intended the work to be connected with. Does that make sense? So I can't emphasize that enough. Now, look, if you can't do that, if you obviously we can't do it for every one of our images, but if you can't do that, that's where I say you have to throw away that story because unless you can communicate that story, unless you can talk about that story, your client doesn't know that story. And so just keep that in mind as you curate your portfolio. I went long on that one, but I hope that that makes sense. Um, number eight, uh, bah, 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 bah. This, this is subjective, but this is very, very much my opinion. You can see this um, if you look through the history of photography. Um, and if you look in you know, how museums will present work and how art galleries will present work, um, keep color images together keep black and white images together, or at least keep them in groups. Um, I'm a huge proponent of this when it comes to album design. I always will design a spread in an album that is either full color or full black and white. And I believe that it just helps create cohesion and consistency in this style that just feels like it flows and it's very fluid. So I believe that it is important to keep color images together and to keep black and white images together. It keeps your it, it keeps your your website visitors' eyes flowing. It keeps it consistent. It doesn't feel jarring. It doesn't interrupt them. It lets them almost forget about the image and look through the image. Does that make sense? And it appeals to their visual senses. So um, keep keep those sort of color images together and black and white images together if you can. Tip number nine, add testimonial images to, or add testimonials to your images where you can. So again, as you're scattering images throughout your website, as you're displaying a portfolio, like you're already having website visitors look at images on your website, why not spread like one-liners throughout those, even on top of those images, because it's going to be those little elements of, of you know, making, uh, increasing their confidence in you. And making them connect with you and and uh, and what you offer and what you do for clients in a bit of a different way. So we've got a comment. Oh, interesting. I alternated for very variety in certain sections, but that's a good point. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things where um, I guess it's very subjective. The black and white versus color thing. I just know, you know, personally, when I'm looking through a set of images, if it jumps all over the place, it just it feels jumpy. It feels jarring. It feels alerting if it's going from like color to black and white to this to that to this to that like I think about when I'm editing a wedding when I'm when I'm working on a wedding for a client I want there there to be you know this these groups of images that are looking similar together I'm not going to present the the bridal prep and have like one image black and white one image color one image sepia one image color one image black and white like I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that back and forth because as you go through it and go through the story it feels really inconsistent it feels very jarring and very uh, very disruptive and so I think in a portfolio it's a it's a it would be a similar pattern I would group them together I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, so number nine, add testimonials. And number 10, the final tip is to um, link and connect whatever social media platform that you choose to to use as the sort of main driver, the primary source of your social media interactions. Um, link that in your portfolio. Basically say like, hey, look, here's my best 80 images or here's four weddings that you can look through. But if you want to view just my most recent work or my random ramblings or some of my personal work, come over here onto Instagram and connect. I'd love to sort of, you know, talk with you over there and I'd love to show you some more work over there so that you can get an idea of the sort of day-to-day -day things that I that I create for my clients. So use your portfolio as an excuse to connect with clients on social. Now that could be Instagram, it could be blogs like LJ was talking about. Excuse me just a minute.
There we go. Sorry about that. I have a <clears throat> bit of a sore throat. I'm okay, <laughs> but I have a bit of a sore throat, so I'm talking for 30 minutes. I need a glass of water. Um, yeah, connect with social, you know, like bring them over. It could be blog posts. It could be Facebook, uh, a Facebook group. If you have a Facebook group, it could be a Facebook page. It could be Instagram. It could be Flickr, like whatever platform you choose to use. Um, I'm an advocate for having one platform as your primary platform. Link that in your in your website. So as they've viewed your portfolio, as they've dug in, as they've spent time in your website, give them an opportunity to dig deeper. Give them an opportunity to sort of live in the now, which is you know the the platforms that you're using to update on a more regular basis. Um, give give them a link there and, and connect that. So that's tip number ten. Um, the final thing that I want to share in in this, um, and again, if you're on the first aid. Um, if you're in the email program, again, like this, this is all free. There's no, there's no promotion. There's this just trying to give you content, trying to help you. Um, we're going to email a summary and a checklist and some more resources later on this afternoon. So if you're on that email list, great, you're going to get it. If you're not go to get sproutstudio.com slash first aid. We've been linking it here in the group. So you can, you can get that, put your email address in there. We're going to email a summary at the end of every day. And every morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going live with more of these, building out this 14-day marketing challenge in this marketing roadmap. Um, so yesterday was website, today's website, tomorrow, I uh, forget what we have planned, but um, big plans coming up. Um, the last thing I want to share is one of my favorite things to install and to do on my website to check all of these things, all these things that we've talked about here and everything else um, that you guys might be suggesting um, or thinking about, or any educator might be thinking about and talking and teaching about, um, is to sort of validate whether this stuff makes sense or whether I'm just going crazy and you know talking out my you know over here. Um, install a, a tool that allows you to see what your clients are doing, see what your website visitors are doing on your website. Sounds creepy. I know, but it is incredibly useful. So the tool that I love to use is a tool called Mouse Flow, M-O-U-S-E-F-L-O-W. And if you use Mouse Flow, you basically install like one line on your website. Um, I would say there's a free version. I think you can get up to 100 website views per month on the free version. Honestly, I'd say it's worth the like 10 bucks to get one month to a paid version of it. Because you're gonna get good insight and then and then just cancel. You don't need to have it every month, but do it for at least a month in the beginning. Um, basically, it lets it shows you a heat map of your website. So basically, it will show you as you install it and people start to go on your website. It will show you what buttons people are clicking or where people are scrolling or where their mouse is going for attention. Um, you can even view individual recordings of what people do on your website. So you can actually see: Are people clicking next or are they clicking X? Are people scrolling or are they clicking? Are people even seeing this button over here? Are people even reading this content over here? Like you can validate any of these things that we just talked about with actual data, with actual proof whether or not this stuff is working. And then that will give you insight on individual things to improve on your website. And you can iterate over that and make bigger improvements over time. So Mouse Flow is the name of the software I recommend. Again, they have a free version for I think up to 100 visitors, which might be enough for you. Um, or go and pay you know $10 or something for the first month and then cancel after the first month um, and get more visitors recorded. So there we go. Almost 40 minutes. I hope you guys... So we have, again, we have three kids. You guys know that. I don't know if you can hear them in the background or not, um, but you know the whole Sprout Studio team is working remotely, um, obviously during these times, and so I'm here in my home office, um, but my wife is trying to keep our three kids quiet during this. So um, Ali, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> thank you for keeping them quiet. I don't know if you can hear them playing in the basement or not, but if you can... That's okay. Say la vie, right? That's the way that it goes, and uh, we're all just doing what we can over here. So um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out and for spending time with us. Um, every single day, I challenge you to make these improvements, to make some of these changes in your marketing so that as we go, as we get through these difficult times together, um, at the end of it, you'll have a marketing plan and a solid platform to increase your revenue on and to generate some more revenue so that you can make up for any lost money that you may have um, you may have had to lose out on because of cancellations and, and rescheduling and so on and so forth. So 
Thank you guys again so much. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Social isolation is the name of the game. Let's make sure that we all do this together. We all do our part so we can get back to normal life as, possible, as quick as we can once this is all over. So thank you guys. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys soon.